Hi, this is Black Coffee Collective. You might have been expecting David Graeber, so apologies for that. Um, when we set this channel up, the, the whole idea, the whole ethos is that we're a bunch of activists and organisers, lots of different experiences, and we wanted to share those experiences with you. And we had hoped that the next video was going to feature David very heavily and look at things like consensus forming. Um, and we have a load of great stuff, but myself and Elif, who you might recognise from the first video that we did on Rogerver, um, haven't had time to put it together because um, we are activists and organisers. And there is something that um, that is very close to both of us and that we've, we've both been um, um, involved with um, her more than me. We wanted to use this opportunity to share what platform we have with this particular issue because it is shockingly um, unspoken about, even even in leftist circles. What I'm talking about is partly Roger Ver, but mostly there's is, is, is the ongoing hunger strike. Um, we are now in um, what is arguably the longest hunger strike in British history. Um, and this all stems from the um, entirely just um, and peaceful demands of the Kurdish people in that they are wanting Turkey to obey its own laws and allow who the, whom they regard as their political leader and the architect of the revolution in Rojava, um, Abdullah Rochalan, to be able to have access to his legal team. He's, he should be allowed to see them once a week under Turkish law, and he hasn't seen them since 2011. Um, many, many Kurdish activists and politicians and journalists and academics across the world, but obviously particularly in Kurdistan, and Turkey are alarmed by this and are concerned for his well-being. And a number of them have now gone on hunger strike. Um, so regardless of how you feel about hunger strikes, these are people with peaceful and just demands and they need our help and our solidarity. And I think if, if you have any politics sort of similar to mine, and I suspect if you're watching this channel, you probably do, you know, you may well have been inspired by reading about um, the International Brigade and uh, Paris Commune and Kronstadt and Mexican revolutionaries. Well, there is a, 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 a flesh and bone revolution happening right now in Rojava and is based on the ideas of Abdullah Rochalan. The three pillars of it are a radical democracy, uh, liberation for women and, and, uh, and, and ecology on a scale that difficult to understand in the West. And I think these are all themes that are huge, massive, universal themes for all progressives across the world. So I really think we need to be supporting this and I, I hope you don't mind us swapping out a DIY toolkit video for a, another video explaining a particular issue. But we wanted to share our platform with one of the London hunger strikers who is now going to tell you a bit about why he's felt that he has to do this and, and, uh, and what they want to happen next. So um, thank you for watching this. Um, we are going to put quite a lot of links um, in the description of this one and Elif will be at the end talking a little bit about how you can get involved with this particular campaign but um, this is Ali at the Kurdish Community Centre in Haringey in London. My name is Ali Poiraz. I've been living in London for 16 years. Before I came here, I spent 21 years and four months in various Turkish prisons as a political prisoner. Since the 14th of March, I've been on hunger strike with two other friends in London, which makes this 29 days today. This is alongside almost 10,000 friends in different Turkish prisons. Almost 10,000 other Kurdish people are on indefinite hunger strikes in various Turkish prisons, including Leyla Govan, who started the hunger strike, the HDP Hakari MP, Leyla Govan. She's been on hunger strike for 156 days today. The reason we are on hunger strike is in protest of the 20-year isolation of the Kurdish people's leader, Mr. Abdullah Öcalan. We see his isolation as not just against one person, but against all the people of Kurdistan and all the people of Turkey. We understand that this isolation is as a result of an international plan to capture him 20 years ago, an international plot carried out by international powers. We do not accept the legitimacy of this. We condemn this. Demands are simple. We demand for Abdullah Öcalan and the people in Imrila to have access to their lawyers, 
and all political prisoners have access to their lawyers because we know that as Turkish fascism is defeated more and more in Rojava especially, Turkey attacks political prisoners even more, attacks our people even more. The more we have gains and achievements, we condemn and reject this approach. We do not accept the isolation in Turkish prisons. Nine people have already sacrificed themselves to try and break the silence. And we also know that 40 people are in a beyond critical condition as a result of these hunger strikes. We don't want any more losses of life. What we are doing is, is to save the lives of more of our friends and comrades especially because we come from a tradition that has taught us that we love life so much we are willing to die for it. And we know that fascism, Turkish fascism, is determined to annihilate our people, so many of us around Europe have also joined this hunger strike to break the silence. We also condemn the silence of Europe, we condemn the silence of the so-called humanitarian institutions, such as the Committee for the Prevention of Torture, and therefore, we call them to their duty to do their job. Once again, long live internationalism and long live international solidarity. The very same people who called Yasser Arafat and Nelson Mandela terrorists yesterday are calling the Kurdish people's leader, Abdullah Öcalan, and all the Kurdish people terrorists today. We have never encouraged or been on the side of terror but we have always been subjected and on the receiving end of terror, of Turkish state terrorism. When 300 young people were being burned alive in the basements of Jizre, Sur and Saibin, these very same international powers were quiet and did not react. We condemn this silence and we are very well aware that this silence comes from the dirty interests and relations that international powers have with each other, which comes together in the international arms trade. We reject this, and we understand that yes, the same states that called Arafat and Mandela terrorists are today putting up their statues in their squares, and, and we understand that these interests and relations will come to the surface because the same Kurds whose fight and defeat of ISIS was championed are the same Kurds who are being tortured, imprisoned and massacred and being oppressed by the Turkish state. We understand that all international peoples, the peoples of the world, also know the motivation behind this and the reason behind this. So once again we say, long live internationalism. You've heard Ali, who's one of the London hunger strikers. And now what's really important is for us to take action, to save the life of Ali, save the life of Nahide, Said, Imam in Newport, and all the hunger strikers all over the world. We ask you to find us on Twitter and Facebook and like and follow Solidarity with Hunger Strikes, our Facebook pages and our Twitter page, and also write to your representative, whether it's your MP, your congressperson, your candidate for the European Parliament, please write to them and ask them to pressure and use their platforms to get the CPT, the Committee for the Prevention of Tor Torture, to do their job and to get the Turkish state to honour its commitments.